-hmm. that you don't care, that you are <laughs> not interested in that necessarily. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious for you, what is the impact of naming an iconic figure as a member of the LGBT community? Like, how do you see that that affects, why do you see that's important and how do you see that that affects who they are? And you can use your work as an example. Well, I've never named someone in the work that I've done as a biographer who had not already named themselves in some ways. And to me, that's always been respectful. I mean, you do what the person says that they want. Again, we have to understand in the context of, of what Joy has just um, suggested to us that Lorraine Hansberry was a deeply complex woman who, you know, was engaged in multiple behaviors. And I want to make a distinction between identity and behavior here because I think that that's important. And there are ways in, in our culture in which we're so bereft of imagination about what it means to be sexual Say that it. we just, you know, we just freak out. You yes. know, we freak out especially around black women's sexuality. Yes. Mm -hmm. The history of black women in this country is so, it's so poor, you know, it's so mm -hmm. poor in terms of who we are as human beings that we just don't allow black women to be. You know, we want to make sure that black women live in these labels, live in these boxes, and by extension, black people, people of color, uh, members of the black diaspora community, we want to make sure that these boxes are there so that we can sort of tame difference. But I think one of the things that we have to do as scholars, as activists, as artists, as curators, as archivists, as people of color, is allow each other to be. So I don't make a practice of, I hope, I don't make a practice of naming people other than what they say or suggest to me that, that they are. So I don't know that I would necessarily call Lorraine Hansberry a lesbian. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I, I would. I would say, from what I understand, she had female lovers, but apparently she also had male lovers, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to read her across the spectrum of her particular expressions mm -hmm. rather than see that there, there's only one. And quite frankly, in terms of outing her, I mean, this is sort of old news, <laughs> you know, in a, in a sense. I mean, yeah. who didn't know this? Mm -hmm. who, who didn't know that she was, she had women as lovers? And, and again, if it, if it forwarded her work, all the better for her. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, in my own work, I, I've outed myself, and that's the only person that I'm responsible for outing. But I don't make a practice of deciding for other people who they should be when, mm -hmm. because it's not my decision to make. Mm -hmm. The only decision that I can make, and I tried to do this in terms of, I think the primary decision that I can make, and I tried to do this in terms of the biography of Audre Lorde, was to be as clear as I could possibly be about what I understood her life to be. Mm -hmm. But also to recognize that there would not have been an Audre Lorde had there not been a Lorraine Hansberry. Mm -hmm. That to me is very clear. And Lorraine did not have a, a language and multiple movements in which to situate herself. She was ahead of all of that, way ahead of all of that. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand, as, as Joyce said, she was not only Renaissance, but she was pioneering mm -hmm. in ways that we now have, you know, this kind of sort of labeling language around, but would not address her in any major way to just mm -hmm. categorize her as one and, and, and not the other. Mm -hmm. We have to get over, thank you, thank you. I'll just, just say to end that, we have to get over um, deciding what difference we're going to put up with. <laughs> oh, that brought up so many questions. But now I have to just go out, go ahead and ask, just like take the, the thing and, what is that, dart, hit it in the, okay, joy. <laughs>